right. Today, we are going to be talking about how to attract investors and maintain them to raise millions and millions of dollars for your apartment syndication. And did I give you a quick peek into what we do at PassiveInvesting.com, which is my own real estate syndication company, and how we actually do this in our own group. So I'm going to be uncovering a few layers there so you can kind of see uh, from the outside in what exactly we do and what's our mindset when it comes to investor relations and managing our investors to be able to raise millions of dollars. And to give you an idea as to just kind of what we're talking about here, because I know you probably hear a lot of people talking about raising capital and, and putting together coaching programs and you know, we don't have a, a particular coaching program when it comes to this or anything like that. But uh, to give you a little bit of our track record. So last year in 2020, our group closed a little over $156 million worth of assets. And we raised just over $61 million from our investors. And so uh, and then we're not talking about large check investors. And what I, what I mean by large check, we're not talking about these, these institutional investors that are bringing these large, you know, seven figure checks to the table. We prefer to work with small investors that want to be able to acquire properties and they're putting in, right now our average investment is around $95,000. So uh, we, have, we have raised quite a bit of capital from a lot of our investors and we have just under a thousand active investors inside of our assets. And so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you exactly what we're doing so that you have a better idea and a better understanding as to what we're doing to be able to attract capital uh, into our real estate syndication company. Uh, I do want to talk to you first about our company. It's called PassiveInvesting.com. You can go to PassiveInvesting.com, find out more information about us. There's a section here under Meet the Team. And when you click on that Meet the Team button, you can see our team here. And as you, you can see, it's also starting to grow. Uh, but you can click on my name here, Dan Hanford. And there's a video here, which will have me kind of describing a little bit about my background. So I'm not going to go into it on the webinar today to save us a little bit of time. But you can see here that I'm married with my wife, Danae, along with our four children. I got three girls and a boy, ranging from 10 years down to almost three years. My, our youngest daughter will be turning three on Saturday of this week. And we live and work here inside of Columbia, South Carolina. So you can go there and find out more information about us. If you're interested in joining us on our future opportunities that we have available, you can certainly do that as well by clicking on this little blue button here. It's called the Join the Passive Investing Club button. And when you click on that, there'll be a simple form that you can fill out. And when you fill that out, somebody from our team will reach out to you, schedule a phone call with you, discuss your investment goals to see if our group is the right fit for you. So you can certainly do that. We'd love to have you join us on some of our future properties and some of our future acquisitions as we continue to grow, and as we continue to move into 2021. And then the last thing I wanted to mention before we dive into the content today for the webinar is we have an event coming up. Uh, it's actually later this week. This is Tuesday, January 19th. And just a few days away on January 21st, we have this event called the MFIN Summit. This has always been a virtual online event. We didn't just convert it to virtual because of COVID. We've always done that. It's our fifth time doing it. And uh, so you can go to mfinsummit.com, find out, find out more information about the event there, and also see all of our sponsors, but also all of the speakers. We have over 40 speakers, and right now we have over 500 attendees that are um, already registered for this event. And would love to see you be a part of this event. You can go to mfinsummit.com to find out more information. And maybe you're watching this video and it's already past the event. Well, we do not sell any of our recordings from our prior events. So in order to get access to the event and the recordings, you do have to register uh, for that particular event. So you do not uh, get access to those recordings unless you actually re re pay for the event itself. But we will have another one, another event coming up in June of 2021. So when you go to that mfinsummit.com page, you will find the details for the next MFIN Summit that is coming up in June 2021. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into the topic at hand today. And we're going to be talking here about strategies for attracting high net worth passive investors, the difference between raising capital and securing capital, the process of securing capital, and then the steps to maintain passive investor relationships between offerings. Now, this is going to be a uh, a, a little bit hard for me to be able to go through all of this information in a lot of great detail. Um, during this time frame that we have available today, because usually I spend about 15, 20 minutes going over some content, and then I'll open it up for some questions and answers. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to share with you a few things inside of each one of these that we do as a group, 
And I'm going to be expounding upon this in my session. I have a keynote session on Friday morning at the summit, at the MFIN summit. And I'm going to be diving into a lot more detail into each one of these different topics at the summit. And so I'm going to be talking about it briefly here and trying to get into as much detail as I can in the next 15 to 20 minutes. And then again, I'll open it up for questions and answers, but then I'll dive into even more detail at the summit for those of you who are already registered or um, have are, are registering right now to be able to attend that summit. So strategies for attracting high net worth investors. One thing I want to mention to you about this is let me actually do this. I'm going to do a little thing. And some of you might have seen me do this before, but I want each one of you to participate with, with me with this. And I want you to get out a piece of paper and I want you to, it's a blank piece of paper. It can be notebook, it can be a scratch paper, it can be whatever. And I want you to do an exercise with me. And so on your screen here, there should be a whiteboard that you see. And in your chat box, for those of you who are live, I'm going to uh, write a triangle here in the middle. So for those of you who are watching this live, type into the chat box, just let me know. Yes, 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 I can see the triangle. That way I know that the whiteboard is working properly here. Okay, great. All right, we've got lots of people on here. Everybody's saying yes, 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 they can see it, great. So on your piece of paper, what I would like for you to do is draw this triangle on your paper, okay? And in the middle of it, I want you to write the words, and I'm doing this with my mouse, so forgive my penmanship here. I was actually talking to my daughter this morning on the way to, on the way to I was dropping her off to school about penmanship. So I'm, I'm not very good with penmanship when it comes to writing with the mouse. Um, and I'm about to write the word school here. That's not what I meant to write. <laughs> um, let, me, uh, uh, let me do this. I'm going to erase that real quick, and then we'll go back into uh, what we're talking about here. All right. Um, I've lost this thing here. Drawing, drawing, drawing. Uh, all right. Hopefully this works. So this gonna work? No, now I got now I got lines. I've messed myself up here. So let me see if I can get myself back. Okay. Um, we're gonna write the <laughs> let's see. Uh, let me just do this. I'm gonna stop my screen share right real quick because I can't figure out this thing and how to do this real quick. So let me go to this again, and then I'm going to go back to my screen share. I apologize for those of you who are here. And it looks like I have my pencil back, so we're good. I'm not even going to worry about trying to fix this right here. So it's investor triad, okay? We call this the investor triad is what I want you to try to do, okay? Um, type in the word investor triad. And you might have heard of something similar to this, but it works really well with this situation and this topic that we're going to be talking about. I want you to write the word no at the top up here. And I want you to write the word like at the bottom left. And on the right hand side, I want you to write the word trust. Now, stay with me here because you're probably thinking, oh, I've heard of this before, but I, I want to expand your mind just a little bit with this particular investor triad. And so of these three things, this no, like, and trust, in the chat box here, I want you to tell me what, which one of these three do you think is the most important? Do you think it's more important for someone to know you, for someone to like you, or for someone to trust you? So of these three things, which one do you think is the most important? So go ahead and type it in there now. I got several of you already typing this in here. Great. I'm waiting on several of you more. We had over 300 people registered. So I know there's a bunch of people on here. Uh, so, all right, great. Awesome. Awesome. Got, we have a lot of good different answers on here. I have no, no, all trust, 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 trust. No, 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 trust, 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 trust. All three of them, uh, trust, trust, trust. And they have a, a couple people in here saying like. And let's see here, uh, all, all of them are needed. So let me expand your mind just a little bit because most of you on here either said trust or like. And if several of you have said no. And some of you have also said all three of them. One of the things that you have to realize is that in order to build out and attract investors, the number one thing inside of this investor triad is this top piece up here, which is no. And you might be thinking, wait a minute, but, but I also want people to trust me. And that's definitely a piece of the puzzle and a, a component of it. But if you focus on that trusting part, part of it or the people getting, the, getting people to like you part of it, you lose the sight of being able to build out a process for people to actually get to know you so that when it gets to when this, they actually have an opportunity to be able to make an opinion as to whether or not they like or trust you. So you have to make sure that you put a process in place 
So you can actually be attracting people and being in front of people and getting people to know who you are. Why do you think that we do these webinars every single week to our investors? It's because we want to be in front of our investors. We want to be in front of people who have never heard of us before. And we want to be able to get people to know us. So for those of you who are on here right now, I want you to type into the box here and let me know if you have never heard of me before. So just oh, let's do this. There's, there's a little button on here. You can raise your hand. Just raise your hand if you've actually never have heard of me before or Multifamily Investor Nation or our group at all um, prior to being, being aware of the webinar that we did today. So how many of you on here have never heard of us before? Several of you are raising your hand right now saying, hey, I've actually have never heard of your group before. So guess what? We do these weekly webinars because we know that we have about 30 to 40 percent of the, of the people that come to see us every week on these webinars are new people that have never heard of us before. And we want them to be able to know who we are. We want to start that process of that investor triad, getting people to know us. And then as they start to know us, guess what? People immediately, they will immediately, usually within a matter of seconds, make an opinion as to whether or not they like you or not. Several of you on here right now have already kind of turned me off and said, you know what? I don't like this guy. And that's fine, right? Because I have to have enough people that actually know me so that they can make an opinion as to whether or not they actually like or get to the point of being able to eventually trust me. And that likeness starts the moment they start to know who you are. They start to make that opinion as to whether or not they actually like you or not. And then once they start to hear from you more and more and more, that, that, that increase in likeness gets to the point where they actually are starting to trust you. And once they get to that trust standpoint, they, that's when they will be willing to be able to wire you, you know, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars on a particular asset that you're trying to acquire when it comes to real estate syndication. And what's really cool about this, if you pay attention closely, is the way this process works in this investor triad is once people start to know you, again, they go over here and they start to immediately start to make an opinion as to whether or not they like you or not. And they're either going to jump over here and say, no, I don't like this person, and they're going to be gone, and they're never going to follow you again. Or hopefully, if you're a likable person, right, people are going to go from this like stage to this section over here, which is the trusting phase. People are going to start to like you and then eventually trust you. And then what's really, really cool here, which is a missing piece and a component of a lot of different people's process when it comes to attracting investors, is they fail to ask for referrals. So once you have actually educated somebody and said, hey, I know you now like me, you now trust me enough because you've invested several hundred thousand dollars with me, I want to now see who do you have in your circle of influence that now you could get them to start to know me and now they can hit their family and friends and coworkers can now know who I am. And then what's an even next level level step from here, which is even really cool, which is cooler, if you will, is the fact that once you find somebody that trusts you and they make that referral at to, so that people know who you are, they actually jump this step and go straight to the like and they go straight over to trust. So really it's kind of a, they go to, they go to the know you and they immediately jump down here to trust because there's an inherent trust that is built into somebody who has already put their own money with you and saying, hey, I like these guys. I trust these guys. They execute on what they say they're going to do. They're very communicative. If anything is going differently from what they told me, they always communicate. And that will immediately get people to know who you are and immediately drive them to that trust phase because it's built into the person who referred them. This is a very important piece of the puzzle that you have to fully understand as you're starting to develop, as you're starting to build out your investor relations process. So let me go here. Let me go ahead and do a different screen share here and get rid of what I've already got on the screen here. All right. And I know some of you might have some questions about that investor triad. So when we open it up for questions and answers here in about probably 10 minutes or so, I'm going to have you I'll be able to answer, ask some of those questions so we can get some of those answered here. All right. Let's see here. Um, so when we go through, the, the reason I wanted to talk to you about that is because that is a very important when it comes to, one, the strategies for attracting investors, but also uh, being able to keep people next to you and close to you. And I see so many people that do lead generation, if you will, to be able to attract investors. They put them on their email list and they get put on an email list and they'll send out an email maybe once a quarter or a couple times a year. 
And those investors, after a few weeks, are like, I don't even know who this person is. And they either unsubscribe or they just put you immediately to the spam box. And they never hear from you again. And so I'm going to talk to you about a few things that we're doing at PassiveInvesting.com that allows us to be able to attract high quality investors, but also investors that want to continue to invest with us and that we continue to engage with them. So some of these strategies that we use for attracting investors is number one, we're, we're, we're sending out a, uh, well, I, I'll mention that or that piece in just a minute. We always are doing, we are building out, we have, have built out an authority platform. That's one thing that you really should consider doing as you are getting into this space is building out an authority platform, whether that be a podcast, whether that be, you know, you writing a book and being interviewed on different programs, or maybe you just write in a blog. I, I, I'm actually connected with someone who uh, is a, is a full-time physician and they just started writing a, on a, on a blog. And every single you know, week, they'd write a couple of different articles on their blog about various things that different physicians might be thinking about. And over, over, the, over like the next like 18 to 24 months, he just started doing that and built out his program. And now he's raising millions and millions of dollars for his program whenever he's, for his syndications that he's putting together, which is phenomenal by doing that just from a blog. And that's pretty much all this person does. I mean, they, they might occasionally get interviews and things like that on different podcasts, but for the most part, people are finding him because of the content that he has generated over, over, over time. And so being trying to put yourself in that authority position is really, really important. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, I've not closed a deal yet, or I haven't raised any capital yet. So how can I be interviewed on that or be able to be an expert in that if I haven't done it yet? Well, there's probably something in your own background or experience where that you are an expert on. And so don't always think that you have to be interviewed, say, on a podcast that's related to real estate, right? One of our kind of strategic things that we do as a group is we try to get interviewed where nobody else in real estate is being interviewed. So if we have experience in process and the processes, or maybe we're in the process of uh, working with physicians, we're not just going to go on a real, real estate um, podcast. We're going to go on physician-related podcasts where we know other high net worth investors are going to be on there. One of the ones that I like to do, which I always am a little bit reticent to talk about, but uh, it's a very unique thing. If you have background in business or experience and success in business as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, guess what? You can now be interviewed on other business-related podcasts. And that allows you to be able to get in front of a totally different audience where nobody else is actually thinking about you, right? And same thing with these when we used to do, obviously with COVID, it's a little bit different, but when we used to do in-person meetups, it, when, when a high net worth investor comes into a room, guess what happens? It's like a fat rat on a Cheeto, boom, everybody pounces on that person, tries to get their information, tries to get them to invest with them. Well, now they got so many different people that they have to choose from, it's hard for you to be able to stand out from the crowd. But guess what? Think about being a part of, a, of, a, of, a, of an event or an association or some sort of meetup that you're the only one they're looking for um, uh, um, capital, right? And so now you are the only one that's looking for that capital. When somebody walks in the room, they have your full and undivided attention. And so those are the types of strategies I'm going to cover at the MFI and Summit of what are, the, what are some of those events that you want to be a part of and what are some of the different places you need to be and be attracted to so that you can be in front of these high net worth and accredited investors that will allow you to be able to close more deals in 2021. Now, there is a difference between securing capital and raising capital. And you might think, well, it sounds to me like it's the same thing. Well, raising capital in, in my book is really that attracting investor piece, right? And that's just one level of investor relations. There's actually kind of really three or four different layers of investor relations. One is attracting investors. And then you have to go, oh, wait, now I have these investor leads. Now, what do I do with them? And so you have to have an investor relations process to onboard those investors to your particular platform. And then you have to be able to nurture those leads that came in that you've already started to build that relationship with to be able to continue to provide information to them. And then the, the fourth layer is that securing capital of, all right, we have a deal. It's under contract. We have 60 days to execute. We need to raise this $20 million from contract to close. Or maybe you're in the smaller space and maybe you're, you're going to raise that, you know, two or three million or five or six million in that short period of time. 
That's that securing capital. Just because somebody verbally told you they can invest a half a million dollars into one of your projects doesn't mean that they're actually going to execute on that. You have to have that process of securing capital in place so that you can be confident when you're going out and finding deals to be able to tell the sellers and tell the brokers that you have the money and the capital to be able to raise, to be able to acquire that particular asset. And so one of the pieces that I want to talk about is the securing capital. Um, during my session during the summit, I will talk about the, in a, in a really a lot of great length about the investor relations process of investor management and nurturing those investor leads. And I'm going to share with you a little bit more detail about what we are doing right now with PassiveInvesting.com to be able to nurture those leads, to be able to keep them close to you as much as possible. But the process of securing capital is a process that you have to have in place because I have, have I've seen operators where there are two weeks before closing and I call them up like, hey, how are you doing on this particular raise for this particular deal? And they're like, oh, we have it all committed. I'm like, committed? That, 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 that's great. That's awesome. How much money is in the bank? Like, oh, we don't have any of the money in the bank yet. And I'm like, so talk to me about what your process is for securing capital. And they're like, oh, well, we just talk to investors and they tell us they're going to invest. And we just like, you know, hope they're going to invest. I'm like, waiting. I'm like, you got to have a process in place. You have to walk your investors through a particular process and say, okay, on this particular date, we're doing a webinar to talk about the, to talk, to talk about the project at hand on, you need to be able to submit your soft reserves to let us know that you're interested and in how much you're interested in investing. Here is the date that the PPM documents and the disclosure documents will be ready for you to be able to review. This is the, the, the initial funding deadline, or we would like to have all the funds in. Our group likes to have all the funds in three to four weeks before closing because we do not want to be scrambling the day before closing, wondering where our capital is. We want to be able to have all those funds in and secure it ahead of time and four to five weeks for investors to be able to review the documents and make decisions and you know wire funds is, is, is a plenty amount of time for them to be able to be able to secure, for us to be able to secure their capital into the deal. And so that's what you have to have. You have to have this clear timeline in place to make sure that your investors know what to expect along the entire process. And then once they wire their funds in, you have to make sure you're communicating with them and saying, hey, we've received your funds, you're secured in the deal, and this is the date that we're closing. And if for some reason you have to extend on that date, you communicate that, that, the, that there is an extension in place, and then why it was executed, how it was executed, how many days it was executed for, and the next closing date. And then the day you close, you should be sending out to your investors in a congratulations email saying, congratulations, we've closed on this asset. Here are the next steps of what to expect. Monthly distributions, quarterly distributions, however you do it. Our group does monthly distributions. So monthly distributions, monthly email communications on that asset, on the performance of that asset. And what's the timing of the K-1s at the end of the year? And then what about the quarterly financials and how we can review those and where to access them and who do we need to reach out to if you have questions? Making sure your investors feel very comfortable about who they should be reaching out to about any particular thing. So there's that clear communication channel about to your investors and making sure that there's an entire process in place for that. And then of course, um, this last thing we're going to talk about is, is a few steps of how to maintain those passive investor relationships in between offerings. And this is something that during my session, I'm going to be diving into a little more detail on. But one of the very you know, strategic things that we started is we started obtaining the mailing address of every single one of our investors, even before they invest in one of our deals. So what we are doing is we are building out a, a, a mailing list so we can start to um, uh, communicate with them, not just via email, because our email list has about a 53 to 54% open rate, which is actually really phenomenal when it comes to email marketing. And because most, most people in email marketing will say, if you get a you know 20% open rate, you're phenomenal, right? Well, we're getting more than double that. We're at 53, 54%. But I still look at that and I go, that's you know 45% plus those people that are still not getting our emails because they're not opening it. And so another way to be able to get people to open up your content is to have another channel to communicate with them. And that for us is those, is those, those mailed printed newsletters that we send to our investors every single month. And inside of that newsletter, it's usually between about 12 to 16 pages of content. It is a high gloss kind of magazine style newsletter 
that allows the investors to be able to hear from each one of our managing partners about things that we're working on, things that we're thinking about, things that we're doing, and educating them on the entire process of investing with our group. And we also interview one of our investors and say, hey, we would like to interview one of our high-level investors for our next newsletter and let them know about how, what their experience has been like investing with our group. And we cherry pick those investors to say, and, and, and call them up and say, hey, um, I know you've invested in multiple projects with us. We'd love to interview you and include you in our next newsletter and, and get them to be able to be part of that. And so we, we, we write those, those articles and put those in the newsletter as well. And it is a lot of work, but for us, it's another way for us to stay in touch with them. And it's also, there's some there's a strategic thing that I have done last year that allowed us to be able to ask for referrals with this newsletter as well, which I will share with you at the summit in a little more detail. So let me go ahead and do this. I know I've gone over a little bit on the time that I allotted uh, to be able to you know, go over some of this stuff. So I want to open the, 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 um, the webinar up right now for some questions that you might have around the topics around the, what we have actually talked today. And I will try to dive into these topics as much as I can. And also remember, if you go to the mfinsummit.com website, you can register for the next summit and we'll dive into some of these topics even more. All right, let's see uh, if I have any questions in here. Uh, so Carlos has asked me a question, but uh, I don't know the answer to that question. So if you want to send me an email, I haven't seen it yet. I haven't checked my email today, but uh, you can shoot me an email or one of my assistants and we can uh, get this taken care of for you here, Carlos. Um, is all this back office work being done with an investor app or a platform investors to use? So Dana, that's a great question because I didn't really dive into that very much, but there actually are two platforms that we use uh, there are two platforms that we use for our investor relations process. The first one that we use is called Active Campaign. So Active Campaign is one that we use to manage our incoming leads off of our website. So if you go to our passiveinvesting.com website, that form that you fill out is connected straight into Active Campaign and allows us to be able to keep track of and make sure we're communicating with those passive investors. The other platform that we use is actually an investor portal. And so when we actually close on an acquisition, that's how we keep track of the closing, the waterfalls and the equity st structures. And we use the, the uh, it used to be called IMS, Investor Management Services. And they, uh, they were just recently, I think last year, maybe the year before, they were bought by RealPage, which is a property management software. And uh, they actually uh, merged together and have a software now called RealPage IMS or a RealPage AIM is what they're calling it. And so we use that software. It's a very robust software. It, uh, it's not the cheapest software, but it's a very robust software. And we really do like it quite a bit. So it is, uh, it is definitely something that I would highly recommend that you, you, reach, you, you uh, investigate further and maybe even get a demo from them. So I have two people in here asking similar questions. And so I will uh, go over this again really quickly. But I do know Gabe's also asking about when will this avail this webinar be available for viewing later? And so typically we have these recordings available uh, shortly after the webinar. We have to wait for Zoom to, to kind of render the cloud recording that we put in there. But usually a few hours or by the end of the day, we'll usually have those uh, uh, emailed out to those that registered for this particular webinar. So if you want to watch it again, you can certainly do that. So Tariq is asking, can you quickly give a five to 10 steps for securing capital in order? And I had Frenchie over here asking, can you please repeat the three stages before securing capital? Actually, those are two different questions. So let me, let me answer uh, uh, Frenchie's question first. So the first step in uh, before securing capital is the attracting investors and raising capital and getting those leads for the investors into your investor database, right? That's the first step, it's attracting leads into your database. The second step is what to do to onboard those leads. So just because somebody registered for your email list doesn't mean you should not communicate with them. I highly recommend because it's a relationship process that you jump on a phone call with every single one of your investors, whether you need to do it or not. So we're doing primarily 506 Charlies with the SEC exemptions. And so that means we don't have to have conversations with our investors. Most of you will start off with a 506 Bravo, but either one that you do, you will need, I suggest that you should have a phone call with those investors, because again, that's how you're going to build that trust with your investors to be able to deepen that relationship with them and to allow them to have the, have the confidence in your group 
to be able to invest with you. So first one is attracting capital, I mean, attracting investor leads. The second one is onboarding those investor leads into your you know, circle of influence or into your kind of fence, if you will. And the third thing is really how to build a fence around your investors, right? How to make sure that you can, could you make sure that they stay inside of your circle of influence and they learn from you and they obtain knowledge from you and you're able to train them and you're able to communicate with them in multiple different formats between now and the time you have your next deal. Because it might be two or three months, it might be six months. I know some operations that operators last year that they weren't able to close any deals last year. And so they went a whole year without, without actually uh, having a deal for their investors. But you have to have that communication process in place so that you can communicate with your investors even if you don't have a deal. And then that last step, number four, is that securing capital phase. So, uh, Tarika, going back to your question here, uh, uh, is about uh, the five to ten, five to ten steps or so for securing capital, and in that particular order. So, I mean, the first step is is um, is in securing capital. Is the first thing we do is we send out an email to our investors and saying, "Hey, a new deal alert. Here's the highlights and the specifics of this particular deal. Here are the projected returns that we have on this property." Here's a link to the investor presentation that we put together for it. Here's a link to register for our webinar that we have put together for it. And here is our link to the soft reserve form. So we want investors to know that right away, they can go and submit that soft reserve form because our projects fill up pretty quickly. We want to make sure that they can secure that capital um, very quickly. I think they can secure their spot in the particular deal so they don't, they don't lose it, right? So that's kind of the first step, if you will. Second step is having and, having and hosting that webinar. Now, in the background, you should be working with your securities attorney, making sure that you're getting the, 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 um, the, the, the PPM, the private placement memorandum documents in order so that when you are done with the webinar, that is done. It's ready. And those investors can start to review that a day or so um, after the webinar, if not the day of the webinar. And so you're going to have a lot of things going on in the background as well. You're going to have that webinar. The webinar is going to go over the details of the, web, of the, of the, of the actual project itself and they'll also be able to open it up for questions and answers to the investors that are, that are attending that webinar so you can give them an opportunity to be able to ask any questions in a live format. Now, we always are open for our investors to be able to email us or call us or even come visit with us if they want and ask any questions as it relates to these particular offerings. So it's not just they have they can answer questions at the webinar, but that's one of the, pro, one of the ways that they can do that. And then the, the next step after that is going to be setting deadlines, right? That, we want to make sure that there are deadlines in place for investors to be able to uh, follow along with. So we're setting a deadline for the webinar. We're setting a deadline for when the PPM will be released and a deadline for when, ca when capital needs to be secured in our bank account, in the escrow account, ready for us to close. That, that's what we call our funding deadline. And so that has to be very clear cut uh, funding deadline. And then, of course, we'll also include in the deadline for closing. So this is our projected closing time frame. And what we do is we'll usually say, or we're projected to close, you know, the week of a particular week, right? And it's usually the, the, the later that week is when we're projected to close, usually on a, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, somewhere around in there, but occasionally it can be on the first part of the week. But usually it will say like the week of the 18th, right? And it'll be the end of that week that we are projected to be able to close on that particular acquisition. But it gives us some flexibility because, if you tell them we're closing on Wednesday that week, well, guess what? If you have to extend by a day or two, then now you have to send out another email to your investors saying, we've been delayed, we're going to close tomorrow. And, you know, it just creates a lot more work for you. And then once you actually close on that property, you have to make sure that you are communicating with your investors about what are the next steps for that deal. Um, and so we create an investor guide so that investors can have everything in one little package to let them know what to expect as they move forward with the acquisition. And then it doesn't stop there. After you've secured capital, now you got to execute on that business plan and communicate the effectiveness of that business plan in those monthly communications that go out on a regular basis to those investors. So that's the, the process kind of repeated again for you, Tariq. Hopefully that gave you some help and some outside and some um, and some uh, some insights into that as well. Okay. Um, I'm going to answer uh, two more questions, one from Dana here and then uh, another one here from Naeem. So let's see, 
can, uh, do you have any programs for capital raisers? So no, I don't. So I don't, I don't sell coaching programs or, or anything like that. I don't really have a lot of time on my schedule to be able to put together a coaching program. And I honestly don't need the money for it. And so we have just chosen as a group not to put things together like that. But I know that there are some other groups out there that do it. And so you want to reach out to some of those people. You can certainly uh, can you can certainly reach out to that. I know at the summit, there's a few people that are going to be there that that's what they specialize on, on teaching is helping people raise capital and attracting capital and, and doing all that kind of good stuff and have, actually have a coaching program for that as well. So I said two more questions. I'm going to actually answer three. Um, Sharon's asking, can you repeat the name of the software or post the link? And so let me see if I can pull up the link here. Um, see if they actually change this on here you go here's actually uh the software that we use for the investor portal which is what we use called the investor management services and then the active campaign let me see what i have here um, as far as that is concerned give me just one moment let's see if i can pull it up here active campaign is obviously the name of the software and let me see uh, we log in with a, with, a, with a custom domain. So I have to make sure I look this up real quick. So activecampaign.com, I'll type that into the chat box here for you as well. So those are the two softwares that we use to be able to manage the investors and go throughout the entire process uh, with our investors. So uh, you can do that. Well, the last question I'm going to take today is going to be um, from uh, Dana again. So Dan is asking any recommendations for newbies looking to raise capital outside of family and friends. Well, for one, I applaud you for wanting to look outside of family and friends because that's primarily where all of the money that we have raised for our group has come from is outside of family and friends. Maybe more is outside of family. We've had quite a few friends do it. And a lot of our investors have now become friends, which is pretty neat. Um, but our fam my family, a lot of them aren't really in a position to invest. And so they actually have not invested with us, right? But I have quite a few people that, are, that, have, that follow us and that are, are really good friends of ours for many, many years that uh, have invested in every single one of the deals that we have put together. And our group actually, you know, to our you know, uh, uh, you know, surprise, we did some analysis on one of our most recent deals that we closed and we had a, over a 62% repeat investment rate. So 62% of the investors were repeat investors that had, re that had invested in other projects with us, which, so which tells you a lot about a group when you have somebody that has over 50% um, repeat investors in a particular project. That means that they are doing something and they're doing something the right way, right? Um, now, I don't think I really answered your question there about any recommendations for newbies looking to raise capital. Um, but I know one of the things we talked about earlier is trying to find out what you like to do. Do you like to write? Then write a book. Do you like to write? Maybe you write blog articles. Do you like to uh, talk? Well, talking is great. So maybe you can go be on uh, a podcast or maybe you can start your own podcast. Maybe you like to be on video. Well, now you can get in front of video, do audio and video. Maybe you'd like to get in front of a bunch of people and speak. Well, now you can go and speak in front of other people. And so, and it's not just people inside of real estate. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong, I, I, real estate opportunities and, and events are great, but we have to start using our brain and getting outside of the box and thinking about other opportunities for us to be able to get in front of people that are willing to be able to uh, hear from us and learn from us, even something outside of real estate, but then you can talk to them about what you're doing in real estate and it allows you to, be able to attract quite a bit of capital. All right, well, I know quite a few of you are on here and, uh, and are um, already registered for the event coming up this weekend. It's a really exciting time. This week is a lot of hustle and bustle, getting things ready for the event. Our team has spent a lot of countless hours trying to build this conference up and it's going to be a phenomenal event. We're working really hard on the background for you. Look forward to having you on it. And let me see if I can refresh my page here, see if the next event is up. Yes, so already we have the next event um, already registered. Um, for us here. Let me see here. Um, the webinar for next week actually is already up. So let me uh, type into the chat box for those of you who are on with us live. If you want to join us live for the next MFIN webinar, you can go to that link 
And the top is going to be acquiring millions in apartment syndication requires a team, how to build it. And so we're going to have one of our other managing partners, Danny Randazzo on, and he's going to be talking about this, um, acquiring millions in apartment syndication and how it requires a team and how you can build out your team to be able to acquire millions for your apartment syndication business. So make sure you join us this weekend for the MFI and Summit. Go to mfinsummit.com. And then also make sure you join us for the next webinar coming up, which is going to be next Tuesday, January 26th at 11 a.m. Thank you for each one. Thank you each one of you for being here and attending. And we look forward to seeing you next week.